in terms of the national quality and safeguarding framework. Um, we welcome this. I mean, that may be of surprise to some of you in the room, but as the national, as the national peak for um, disability service providers, we actively support a national quality and safeguarding framework underpinned by legislation, as this will be. Um, we particularly do because we think that um, um, by, by going down this path, um, there will be a level of assurance, hopefully, through the National Quality and Safeguarding Commission, that people with disability will not have to um, be as concerned of the, as they will have had to have been in the past about being the subject of disability abuse and neglect, that people with disability will have the ability to um, uh, access quality services, as distinct from uh, perhaps producing a pink bats mark II type scenario. One of the things that we particularly welcome about this legislation is that hopefully it will over time see the elimination of bottom feeders, attracted by the honeypot honey of $22 billion per annum um, in, in an NDIS year-on-year yeah, -year government underpinned through the NDIS. Um, we uh, welcome uh, the um, establishment of a national code of conduct for the workforce. Um, we have concerns that, about attempts to apply that code of conduct to um, providers, not because we don't think providers should be held to a standard, but because we think that trying to actually fit both providers and workers within the same code of conduct produces some perverse outcomes. For example, the draft code of conduct makes reference to um, uh, um, it, uh, inappropriate sexual misconduct um, as being just not on. Fair enough too. But the fact of the matter is that no organisation can ever be guilty of sexual misconduct, only individuals can be. So in terms of like illustrating how there needs to be a separation there, I mean that's my particular example between the code of conduct for workers on the one hand and disability standards for providers on the other. Um, we uh, um, also welcome the fact that, there are pe that um, the, uh, the quality and safeguarding framework makes provision for penalties, which I know was of surprise to some in our sector. Um, it's not to say that everybody should get a whack every time anything goes wrong. It's to say that essentially there should be consequences for bad behaviour. And that's not a radical statement. If it is, tell me, but that is not a radical statement. Um, we're trying to actually work with some of the most vulnerable people in our community in a way which basically ensures they can live happily and safely in an ordinary life. Um, to um, contemplate doing that without appropriate safeguards and penalties for breach um, would, in, in certainly in our view, appear to be somewhat idiotic. 